Well, hey there, and welcome back to Hate's a Good Life. This is my sous chef, Ruby. My name is Natalie, and we are so glad you're here. Today, join us in the kitchen as we make some broth. Hey you guys, like I said, welcome back to Hey It's a Good Life. So glad you're here. Today's video is all about meat broth for GAPS diet. Now you don't have to be doing GAPS diet to make meat broth and that's what I learned the hard way. I really put this off for a long time. It's such a simple nourishing rhythm and I kind of was black and white with it. And so I know that if I was black and white with it, certainly there's some of you who have been intimidated by this, but I wanna encourage you, it is so simple to make broth to have on hand every week for things like chilies and rices and legumes and soups. It's just such a great staple to have on hand. I'm excited to share with you this recipe. Of course, if you want more info, check out the blog, heyitsagoodlife.com. Without further ado, let's hop into things. All right, so step one is really straightforward. You are going to combine the highest quality chicken you can find and afford with your favorite vegetables. Mine are carrots. They offer a really deep, rich, sweet flavor, as well as broccoli and zucchini, which offer a really rich umami flavor to the broth. And I really enjoy those flavors together. And of course, always throw in an onion and some garlic. This is actually a really great way to use those leftover garlic bits that are like too small that just aren't worth smashing up. I will sometimes include those when I just have those like random bits of garlic. Um, but of course, you can include whatever you want here. And then you're going to top all of this off with salt and peppercorns. And I know this is probably going to seem like an astronomical amount of salt, but I add almost a tablespoon of salt to an entire batch of meat broth. And I know that sounds like a lot. Of course, do everything to taste for yourself. Uh, if you need to kind of add slowly and see what works best for you and your family, do that. The peppercorns are also a great addition, full of anti-inflammatory benefits and just so much flavor. You know, again, totally add as much as you feel is best for you and your family's needs. This is how I do it and it works really well for us. Once you've filled your entire pot full of water, it is time to bring this thing to a boil on high. And then once it's boiled, you can just reduce that and simmer on low for about three hours. And it should look like this when you're done, ready to go. My little ritual before I get started is laying out these towels. And I know it seems silly, but it is gonna help keep everything in place and protect your countertops. I don't know if you noticed, but I recently acquired this beautiful marble remnant slab and I'm absolutely obsessed with it. It's been such a sweet way to upgrade our rental situation and I just feel so rich every time I see it. Um, but of course you wanna protect your countertops because it's a very hot situation here. You got hot chicken, hot broth, protect your countertops, lay out some towels. Oh, this chicken falls off the bone and it's so good. Look at that beautiful broth. We just made that. It's so, so tasty and beautiful and delicious. Isn't it lovely? Now to bottle up this broth, I use these giant, I believe they're gallon jars. And it's this like Italian company that I happen to find at our local feed store. They make these beautiful jars and I just fill these up. It happens to, to hold the exact amount of liquid that my heavy bottom pot has. I think it's a gallon. If not a gallon, it's a half gallon, but they're great jars to have on hand. And I end up just kind of using this throughout the week as we need the broth for different soups and chilies and things. I like to fill it as much to the top as I possibly can. And then when I hear that little pop, it's just this extra assurance that things are nice and tight in there. But really what we're going for, aside from this little uh, cup of broth for the chef, <laughs> Really what you're going for when you store your meat broth is a nice thick fat cap. You want about a quarter inch of fat at the top and that is going to seal your broth and offer supposedly up to six months of goodness. I've never pushed it that far. I usually use my broth in about a week's time just to ensure that, you know, I'm not using broth that's gone bad. But, um, you know, they say that a quarter inch fat cap will last you about six months in the fridge. Do what you will with that information. I use mine in about a week's time because I don't like to push it. And of course, always label. 
please always label. Don't be like me and not label and then be like, when did I put this in the fridge? I don't know. Now here's an example of some broth that has a nice fat cap on it that I wanted to share with you. And as you can see, it's lighter. And that's because in experimenting with making this meat broth, I thought, can I kind of stretch this and cut the chicken in half and make two batches? And you absolutely can. It's just going to be less savory. So if you want a more savory broth, use a whole chicken in one pot. To stretch your broth a little farther, you can cut your chicken in half and make two batches. And this is that fat cap that I was talking about. So as you can see, it's holding all that liquid in place and keeping all of that goodness intact for at least supposedly six months. But I usually use mine again quicker than that. All right, now let's talk chicken. You are going to have a whole chicken that falls off the bone. I absolutely love having tender chicken in the fridge. There's so much that you can do with that and the bones can be reused to make a stock. So make sure that as you're pulling apart this chicken, you're saving those bones so you can make stock another time. I tend to leave the chicken out about 10 minutes before I start really handling it just to kind of let some of that heat out. And then I just, in one bowl, I always use my pie dish for some reason. It's just the most convenient. And actually that's how my mom did it. So maybe subconsciously that's just rubbed off on me. Uh, but it's a really easy dish for me to use. And then in another bowl, I just toss the bones in that bowl. And then at another point in the week when I have some time, I'll make some stock with those bones. And then throughout the week, as we need it, we have this chicken on hand for chicken salad or chicken sandwiches or chicken enchiladas like there's so much that you can do with this chicken and I'll share with you guys some recipes for that coming up here real soon so much chicken all that's left to do is cover it up and put it in the fridge and if you're a better human than me and you use beeswax wraps I am so happy for you I need to get on that train but for now I'm using this BPA somewhat natural plastic wrap it is what it is <laughs> I'll get on the beeswax train here real soon. Thanks so much for joining me this week, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Of course, if you did, please do like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, check out the blog as well. I think you guys will appreciate what's happening over there. Leave me a comment if you do. Thanks. I'll see you guys in the next one.